Hi guys, Scrum here and welcome to a long awaited and much requested rig tour video. Now this is a Simlabs P1X racing rig and in this quite long format video I'm going to take a detailed look at how I put it together, some of the decisions that I made, how I mounted the various accessories, how it's compatible with racing and flying and the video for that reason is going to be split into chapters so that you can jump around the topics that interest you the most. So let's get started. So what is the Simlabs P1X racing rig? Effectively, it's this bit here. It's everything except the monitor stand. It's what they call an A-frame extrusion. Extrusion is this stuff here. It's made out of aluminium. And really, the rig is like a giant Meccano set. When you buy a P1X, it's everything that you need to build the core component of any rig. And then you sort of add things on top. Now, extrusion comes uh, in a standard size. It's 40 by 40 millimeters square, and it has these grooves cut along it. You get different sizes. For example, this one here is 80 by 40, but they're all 40 deep. It's just a case of how wide they are. The biggest pieces in the kit are the main spars at the bottom. These are 160 by 40, and they take all of the stress of the rig. Off that will come the upper arms here, which are 120 by 40. So what's the reason for the grooves and how does all this work? Well, effectively, you have these things here, which are called gussets. And a gusset forms a joint between two pieces. So if, for example, you wanted to put together this piece here and you wanted to join it to that piece, that up right there, you have this gusset and it sits like that and you basically bolt into the two sides and you'll often do it on, on the other side as well. And that will hold that very, very rigidly indeed. If you actually look at the gusset itself, it has these little tabs on it. And that is to stop it from twisting when it's in position. The only problem is, is if you want to transversely mount, so that's where you're going this way, those tabs actually then will work on one piece, but don't work horizontally. But that's okay, you just get a screwdriver and break those tabs off and they then fit. You don't get the extra strength, but it still works. And you have to do that sometimes when you're building your rig. So the gussets themselves will be bolted into, into these grooves and they do that via this. It's a T-nut and a bolt. Now the T-nut is designed to go into one of the grooves like this and then that forms the bolting point for the bolt to come in, like that. So with this kind of basic setup, not only can you bolt gussets on to allow other pieces to mount to it, you can also directly bolt accessories. And we'll see that later on when we take a look at the rig. Now, the one thing to note is the cool design of these T-nuts allows you, when you've got all of your rigs set up and you can't easily slide things in from the end, the T-nut design allows you to push them in directly like that. So you can always later on just add pieces anywhere you like on the rig. And that's what makes this so incredibly flexible. Finally, you have these bits of plastic and these are cosmetic design. They're designed, these are end caps, they're designed to fit on the end and just make the, uh, the end look good. And then you also get these uh, little gusset covers here that hide the details away. And that's your kind of finishing touches, but you only want to put those on right at the very end. So finally, what do you need in terms of tools? Well, you are certainly going to need an Allen key set. Most of these bolts will come in either an M6 or an M5 size. This is the M6 and this is the M5. It's slightly thinner. You can get them in black variants as well. So if you're perhaps mounting, we'll see this later, if you're mounting a black anodized uh, mouse pad or something else that's black, you can use the black bolts instead of the silver bolts just for a little bit of effect. Uh, but you'll definitely need a good set of Allen keys. If you want to make life slightly easier, you can, of course, get yourself an impact driver, which can help putting things on and off. I would also say consider getting a good set of washers. 
Uh, when you come to mounting some accessories, you need washers just to help um, push them down. I did that when we look at the stream deck. And I would recommend uh, a rubber mallet, which just helps for you know, tapping on these plastic pieces. Final thing is you can also get, and I do recommend these, you'll see me use them on the rig. When you get the Simlabs P1X, you can order these extra hinge joints. And these are extremely useful uh, when you want to mount something to the rig. Let's say you, you put this on the rig itself and then you mount that piece onto the rig and then you can mount accessories onto this. And we'll take a look later about some of the um, creative things that I came up with uh, when I was mounting the various flight controls and bits and pieces onto the rig. So in summary then, this is like a bit, a giant bit of Meccano. It's all standard equipment. You can buy stuff on eBay, extra extrusion and extra gussets, but do watch out uh, because they're not all as good quality. The SimLab stuff is very good quality um, and you can get some cheap stuff on eBay. Make sure you get plenty of spares. Order extra extrusion, order extra bolts, extra gussets, extra hinges, because you will, I guarantee you will use them when you come to mount things. So that is basically how the rig is put together. So let's move on. Let's talk about the seat. Now with the seat, you have any choice you want. Simlabs do sell Sparco seats, bucket seats. There's many other seats you can get. I know people who've bought motorized, well, secondhand motorized BMW 7 Series seats and put them on their rig. Choice is yours. This is a Sparco bucket seat. In order to attach a bucket seat like this, you'll need to also buy the appropriate uh, bucket seat accessory. That then mounts onto this spar. This spar comes with the P1X rig and this is what you mount your seat onto. There's also an extra thing you can get, which is the seat slider. And I thoroughly recommend that you get the seat slider. So this mounting goes onto the seat slider and by then pulling this handle over here, the whole seat will go backwards and forwards, which allows you to adjust your seating position relative to your screen. Now there is some height adjustment and some brake adjustment on these things. You've got these mounting holes here and mounting spacers, so you can get height adjustability on front and back. And of course that allows you to adjust the rake of the seat. One tip when you're actually buying a seat, absolutely look at the dimensions, measure yourself, measure your back, measure how wide you are, make sure that your seat is right for you. You want to have something reasonably comfortable. Of course, Unless you're using a motorized rig, which you can do with these kind of things, you don't really need the side mount so much, which is why some people just mount comfortable seats rather than actual racing seats. Now there's one last thing that I need to mention. The P1X rig by default comes with these uh, for the feet on the bottom of the rig. These are okay, but they're not adjustable in any way. I thoroughly recommend that you get the adjustable feet. The adjustable feet have two major advantages. One is that it gets the rig off the ground and thus gives you a better seating angle, particularly if you're long-legged like I am, you allow a more comfortable seating position. The second thing is, because you can adjust the height of each corner of the rig, you can also level the rig out so you can make sure, just get your spirit level on it and make sure that the whole thing is level because quite often your floor isn't. So in terms of seating, get whatever seat you want, make sure it's the right size and it's comfortable for you. Consider how you're gonna mount it onto the rig. Definitely get the seat slider for the adjustability and then use the adjustable feet just to finish off your, uh, your comfort and make sure you're nice uh, in a good seating position. What good is a racing rig without pedals? Well, how do we mount pedals onto the rig? The way we do it with the P1X is via a base plate. This is the base plate and the pedals mount onto it. Now everybody has different pedals. These are Husingvelt Pro pedals. They come individually. You might have Fanatec pedals that are already uh, pre-kitted out on a plate. They will mount onto this. This plate here already comes pre-drilled with a number of sliders and holes which offer adaptability for a lot of pre-existing pedals out there. Chances are it will accommodate you. If not, you can always drill your own holes. Now the, the plate itself is easily mountable on the rig. It has four holes in the corner and you use these countersunk bolts that simply screw in and bolt it to the rig. 
And because there's only four of them, they offer quite a quick release possibility. Now, when it comes to flying, let's say you want to go flying as well, you'll need to swap out your racing pedals for your rudder pedals. And my solution to that was to buy a second base plate and mount the rudder pedals onto it. Now, if you're really lucky, your rudder pedals will fit straight onto the base plate. Not with me. I've had MHG crosswinds and I've had these Thrustmaster rudder pedals and both of them required a little bit of drilling. So on the underside, I managed to use one of these slots here, but these two holes I had to drill. This is actually quite soft metal, so as long as you've got a metal drill bit, it's actually very easy to make extra holes in these base plates. Now the base plate itself, as I mentioned, goes onto the rig. The rig itself comes with a platform and the platform allows you to adjust the rake and the seat and the actual position relative to your body. However, I also fitted a seat slider, as we saw on the seat, another one of those onto the rig. So what I have is the base plate, the seat slider mounted to that, and then this plate here goes onto the seat slider. And what that allows me to do is easily move the rudder pedals backwards and forwards which might not sound much, but actually makes a big difference. Even when you've got a seat slider, you can then adjust your person, your actual head relative to your monitor, and then you can adjust the leg space down to your pedals, and it's actually really versatile. It's very important when you're actually swapping from racing pedals to flying pedals though, because you'll find that your feet have to be in a certain position for racing, and quite a different position when it comes to pushing rudder pedals. So having that extra slider was a great idea. Let's talk about monitors and monitor mounting. Uh, quite a critical aspect of any racing rig. The position of the monitor is very important because obviously it determines your field of view. And the closer you can get your screen to your face, if you like, the distance there affects the field of view calculation. So what you're looking for is to try and get your monitor overhanging your wheelbase and then as close to the wheel as possible without interfering with your actual hands. That's what you're trying to do. The way that you do it is by having, well, SimLab sell a free mounting monitor stand. I say free mounting because it's not attached to the rig. It's free standing on its own. If you actually look, it consists of two uprights. This is an upright with a leg that sticks out the bottom and there's a similar one on the other side. And then on the back, there are two spars and that provides the whole structure for the monitor stand. On that, you can then add, depending on what you're trying to do, you can have a single, a triple or even a quad setup. What I've got is a single. I've put a single super ultra wide monitor, but you can equally have triple monitors. They do both. Although I will say that what I did was slightly custom. Normally, the bracket on the back of the monitor mounts onto the top of this upper spar, but what I did was I added an extra 80 by 40 piece of extrusion in order to push my monitor out a bit further. I found that that worked better for me. On top of that, you can add this thing here, which is called the quad stand. I think it's called quad monitor mount, and it's an addition. It can fit on top of the single or the triple, and it literally bolts into the top of the upper spar and provides you with an overhanging monitor, which obviously you can use for you know, separate race control items, or if you're like me, you're streaming, you've got your OBS and chat up there, that kind of thing. And then in between, obviously, I've left space for things like cameras, but if you don't need that, then you can just move this further down and a bit closer to you. So that is the actual monitor stand itself. But it's very useful to attach things to because the monitor stand not being attached to the rig doesn't suffer from any vibration. So as you're racing and you're turning your wheel aggressively and, and the actual rig is moving slightly, none of your monitors, cameras or lights or anything like that are actually moving. So that is actually a really cool solution. I like that. Very adjustable. You can bring it as close as you can get it and you can adjust the height and make sure it's perfect for your viewing angle. We move on now to talking about how I mounted racing controls and flight controls onto the rig. Now, a rig like this is designed to accommodate many kinds of wheel or wheelbase. This particular wheelbase is a SimuCube Pro and that's got a Cubase wheel attached to it. This particular setup allows me to remove the wheel from the wheelbase. 
for easy access. I can fit different wheels on here. I have a different wheel if I want to go trucking, for example. But I used to have a Fanatec wheel on here, a Fanatec wheelbase attached, and I had two different wheels, one for trucking and one for racing. The mounting points um, uh, is where it gets interesting. So this here is called a wheel deck. This is one of, I think, three different attachments that you can get for the Simlabs P1X. There are two others, and they're mostly geared towards direct drive. So in between these uprights, there's more of a front-facing kind of mount, and one's a circular mount. They're great for direct drive wheels. The problem is, if like me, you want to mount um, a yoke or something like that, the only one that really works is this, which is the wheel deck. Uh, the wheel deck is a platform and you can just mount your wheelbase onto it. There's various holes here for standard mounting and that's great. The problem comes is when you want to actually mount a yoke. So the problem is a lot of racing equipment is purpose built and can be mounted quite easily. They have kind of standard mounting holes. It's a bit more mature than say the flight sim market. With flight sim consumer products, they very often just have nothing in the way of mounting holes underneath. This is a honeycomb yoke and it really doesn't have, it's, it's a lot of plastic here and there's nothing to really mount it. There's nothing to screw into. So I can't put it on the wheel deck and bolt into it. So what I have to do is use the, um, the table clamp that comes with it which is why I need the wheel deck because that will slot on there and literally clamp to the wheel deck. Ideally, ideally, this would be a bit like a wheelbase where there's some holes inside that we can actually just bolt straight through from the wheel deck, but sadly, that's just not the case. So pretty much the only thing I need to do if I want to switch from uh, driving and racing to flying is I need just to undo three bolts, pop the wheelbase off, clamp the yoke on and then just adjust the wheel deck for more of a yoke position. After that, however, things have to get a little bit more creative. So for trucking, I use a Thrustmaster shifter with an SKRS attached on top, an Elmar SKRS. Again, this is a, a table mounted thing. So what I had to do was get a little bit creative here. As you can see, it has a table mount clamp on it. What I had to do was make a piece of extrusion just long enough, which effectively means taking an extrusion and cutting it to the right size and then using a gusset to mount it onto the main rig. Now that's great if you've got the right tools. What you really need is a powered mitre saw with a metal cutting blade. And if you do do that kind of thing, don't forget to wear safety glasses because bits of metal do go flying around. Having said that, it's quite soft metal, it's aluminium, so it's actually quite easy to cut. If you haven't got a powered mitre saw, try and find a friend who does have one. Uh, failing that, you're going to need a mitre saw. You can do it with a hacksaw, but trying to get a lovely clean cut, um, you know, could be a bit tricky. And don't forget, when you do make a cut, you need some sandpaper just to file off the sharp edges. If you can do that, you can cut pieces of extrusion to the size that you need, and you can get really creative. So for this one, just a short piece there, gusset it onto the main frame and then simply clamp the shifter on top. So for GA and commercial flying, I like to use the yoke, but for the military stuff and games like DCS, I prefer a flight stick. So down here, I've got my Thrustmaster Warthog flight stick mounted. In order to show what I've done down here though, I first need to remove this mouse mat. So what I did was I again cut a piece of extrusion to size, which gave me something hanging out from the main rig. And then I took the uh, flight stick away from the, it comes with a like a flat platform. It's meant to be table mounted. You remove it from there and it's mounted onto a mounting plate that is actually made by a German company. You can order them online. Once you fit that to the mounting plate, the mounting plate will quite easily just clamp into uh, the piece of extrusion. You can either clamp it underneath or on top depending on what height you want and whether you've got an extension on here and your seating position. So you just need to kind of play with it height wise to get it to fit. Don't forget of course whatever you do around your rig you still need to have enough room to get full deflection on your flight stick so you may need to tweak a bit in order to get the exact position that you need. Now for the for the throttle quadrants I've actually got two throttles um, on the rig. One is down here, which we'll come to in a second. 
but that one has to hinge out of the way because I need to get out of the rig this way. For the other one, which is at the Honeycomb Bravo throttle, this is mounted on the right hand side of the rig and what is effectively otherwise just dead space over here. But to get it in that position and at the right height, I had to again fashion a few pieces of extrusion. So I started off by making a horizontal piece and for that I used an 80 by 40 piece of extrusion. I then double gusseted that to the rig, so one gusset at the top and then one down below. That gives me a very rigid horizontal structure. To that I then attached a single 40 by 40 piece of extrusion, again double gusseted just to stop any kind of vertical movement. And then at the top I got a small piece of horizontal extrusion and gusseted that to the uprights. And what that gives me is a sort of a T-shape to which the honeycomb can use its table clamps on either side. And all in all, that's proved to be a pretty fantastic solution. There's a little bit of flex in it, but not much, and it's perfectly fine for use. The main advantage is I don't need to touch this. I don't need to remove it from the rig at any point, whether I'm racing, driving, or flying, it can just stay there. So I'm really happy with that solution. Now, unlike the honeycomb throttle, which can stay in place, the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, on the other hand, is actually in the way because I get in and out of the rig on this side. So for that reason, I had to come up with a solution that allowed me to just move it out of the way. And what I basically did was I bought one of those hinges that I told you about earlier, and I attached a 40 by 40 piece of extrusion. And then on top of that, I attached two smaller pieces. All of these had to be cut to size by me. And then I bolted, there's four holes actually on the Warthog. I bolted that into the two smaller pieces and then just capped the ends off. That basically gives me a solution where I can push it out of the way when I want to get in and out of the rig. And when I fly, I just bring it in. And that, with the flight stick, makes a really nice, you know, military DCS flying solution. So now having got monitors on the rig, we've got wheel deck, we've got flight controls, we've got everything else. Now we're in the realms of accessorizing. This gets a little bit simpler because some of the stuff that we can get is actually just pre-built by Simlabs. For example, the keyboard tray. You definitely want to have one of these. It's a really, really useful. And because it's on a hinge, it comes with the hinge and the plate. The whole thing sits on your left side. You can push it out the way when you're not using it or when you want to get in and out of the rig and then just pull it in when you want to type. I have seen other kinds of cable tray. I'm not sure if they're sold by Simlabs, but they could attach to this rig where they kind of swing in over your lap. You may want to look into that option. Headset, think about your headset. Where's that go? On mine, I've put it up here. You can buy this little headset hook, uh, attach it anywhere you like on the rig. I've put mine over here, and it's great to just be able to hang your headset up when you're not actually in the rig. Stream Deck. <laughs> Stream, <laughs> Stream Deck's wonderful things but they're a real pain they don't mount to anything they're built to sit on a desk and i actually think elgato should change them to mount properly so i had to get again a bit creative when i mounted the stream deck the solution i came up with was to use a hinge and a small piece of extrusion under here but in order to actually mount this thing onto um, the extrusion i had to drill two holes as I found out when I drilled this thing, it's plastic on the outside and then there's like a metal plate inside. So you'll need a metal drill bit to go all the way through, but it's not too difficult. And once you do that, you can just simply put a bolt straight into a Tina on your extrusion. That's the best solution that I could come up with. And because I put it on a hinge, I mean, you can fix it, but because I put it on a hinge, it allows me to sort of angle the stream decks in a little bit. Otherwise they'd be sat at a fixed angle. You need somewhere to use your mouse as well as your keyboard. And the mouse, for most people, right-handed, you want it over on the right-hand side of the rig. SimLab sell a mouse pad, or mouse mat, or a mouse pad, I forget what they call it, which is a solid piece of metal with two holes in it. And what it's designed to do is bolt into somewhere on your rig. I chose to use this horizontal spar here, just to my right. And what I actually found was, I mounted it on, and it's pretty sturdy. There's a little bit of movement when it's just mounted onto this spur here. But when I put that extra horizontal piece in for my Honeycomb Bravo, I realized that what I could actually do was mount this thing and have it resting horizontally on that spar, which means it gives it extra stability. And it sits right in front of the yoke there 
out of the way and it's actually a really nice place to put your mouse. This one is a bit of a streamer problem, I guess. Won't apply to most people, but camera and lights. Camera, I used a Manfrotto arm and attached it onto my monitor stand. That allows the camera to just sit above this monitor here and look straight at me. In terms of lights, Elgato lights only come with a table clamp. They're not you know, directly mountable onto a rig. But if you table clamp it onto the lower spur, you can just extend them upwards, bring them over into position and they light you up quite nicely. Which brings me on to USB hubs. <laughs> you will definitely want USB hubs on your rig. The problem with all these bits of equipment is they've got to plug in somewhere and USB cables are only so long, right? I've got, and in the end, th this is like, I think the third iteration of USB hub I've had. This is quite a big powered USB hub. Invest in a good one and then mount it onto your rig with double-sided tape because again, they don't have any mounting holes. This has most equipment plugged into I then also have, because that's a USB 3, I also have another USB 2 hub here, which is plugged into that, which then goes off to some of the other accessories. You'll see I've put like colored labels on them here, uh, green, pink, yellow, blue. I use that to identify <laughs> which cable is which bit of equipment. For example, this Thrustmaster um, Warthog throttle here has got a blue dot on it. So I know that blue dot there signifies if I press that, I will activate the throttle because you don't need to have everything turned on depending on what you're doing. But definitely think about having a good USB hub and where you're gonna put it and have a cable that can go off to your computer and to the power supply. And finally, for the accessories, I'm sure you've all sat there wondering, what is this big red button for? That is actually my ejector seat. No, really. It's actually the uh, kill switch for the uh, direct drive. And I couldn't find a good way of mounting that either. It had to be nearby so I can access it quickly if I need it. Um, but my solution for that was very strong double-sided tape and just glue it on. Cable management. Obviously, there's the last thing you're probably going to do on the rig. In fact, it should be the last thing you do on your rig because, trust me, if you try to cable manage before your rig is absolutely how you want it, you'll pay the price. Uh, having said all of that, people do cable management in different ways. Some are really, really picky about it, others cables everywhere. The approach that I went for is a tidy solution, but also a flexible solution, which I'll show you now. So where the cables are being supported, like weight-wise, the horizontal runs, as I call them, uh, Simlabs do one of these things here. They do them in packs. They're not very cheap, though, but they are very strong. And they push into the actual extrusion cutout and twist to lock. They then allow you to attach cable ties. I went with reusable cable ties because what it allows me to do is add new cables in or remove cables when I need to, and then simply tie it back up. Now obviously that means you've got a little bit sticking out but personally that doesn't bother me. I like the flexibility. For the vertical side of things you can go with cable ties like these. These are quite cheap stick-on ones and because they're not supporting any cable weight they don't fall off. If you try to use them on the horizontal runs the sticky isn't that great and they will have a tendency to fall off. If you can afford it get the Simlabs ones and put them everywhere but I found these were a cheap alternative solution and they don't have a cable tie that you need to put on, they just have a built-in uh, cable tie that you can just remove and replace cables with. And the final bit that you might want to think about is this kind of neoprene um, zippers, which just help to hide cables, really. They're not essential, but you know, you could use them here, you could use them here. Again, it depends what lengths you want to go to for your cable management, but in all of this, the main thing is to make sure that where your legs are, all this area is just clear of cables. And you can use the monitor stand vertical and horizontal spurs to just quite easily trunk the cables away. <sighs> and there we go, guys. That is my rig tour video. I hope you've found it useful and enjoyable to watch. Now, if you are thinking about getting a rig like this yourself, there's a few things you should probably think about. Firstly, where are you going to put it? Have you got room to put a rig like this? They're quite big. Also, when you build it and it's all assembled, they're very hard to move. So if you're not settled in life, settled where you're currently living, 
don't think about getting a rig just yet because you kind of want to build it and enjoy many years out of it. Now the Simlabs P1X is a very sturdy rig. It's built to be customized. It's like a giant Meccano set. So you kind of want to customize it for your requirements. Your rig will be very different to my rig. Having said all of that, maybe you've seen something today that has given you some ideas. If you do go ahead and you want to buy one, definitely get some extra extrusion, get some extra bolts, extra T-nuts. Simlabs are quite generous, but it doesn't hurt to order some extras. Extra gussets as well. All the things that you need to customize the rig. And don't forget tools. If you are planning on cutting extrusion, make sure that you've got, or know somebody with, a miter saw with a metal cutting blade on it so that you can make it exactly how you want, which is the whole point. You want to have your perfect rig just for you. That's it from me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. There will be a link in the video description if you want to see all the things that I chose and all the things that you've seen here today. If you do, go ahead and build one. Enjoy. Take care, guys. Happy building.